Well, good day there. I'm over at Ian's shop again, and I got Dad's bike up on the left today. This bike has the uh, leaking front diff pinion seal. So, to fix that, I've got one of these from uh, Custom Moto Quad. They uh, give you nice detailed instructions with colored pictures and pretty, pretty plain English. So, we'll get the tires off and get that thing installed. Here we go. Okay, so the issues with these bikes is this pinion cover it always leaks. It's just plastic on the end there. And uh, the solution to <clears throat> this problem is changing this whole uh, kind of rear pinion housing. So you gotta punch that uh, roll pin out, slide the drive shaft back, and you can uh, get that unbolted and take that out of there. So the next thing you have to do is get those four diff bolts out of there and I already pulled that drain plug, it's an 8mm Allen and I got the oil drained out of it. So next you have to take out the four little Allen screws that hold this uh, pinion cover on so let's give this a go. Okay, so what a fight here. I ended up tearing the axle, well I got the axle out of this side. I couldn't get it out of this side and I didn't want to pull the CV joint apart. But I finally got everything tore apart enough. I had to take those diff bolts out up there so I could uh, move the diff around. But I finally was able to get the rest of those little uh, four millimeter Allen head screws out of there. Where are they? One there, one there. And what I ended up having to do was put that um, Allen tool in there and then put a quarter inch wrench on it and turn it. I, oh, what a fight. Anyways, they're off of there, so I'll get that pinion plate pulled off. So I'm gonna pull that clamp off there, pull that hose off, and then that whole uh, pinion cover should just come right out of there. So, I've got the old one on the bench here, and all these are prone to leaking. And this part in here, that's the active descent control for when you're in four-wheel drive. It kind of just slows the whole bike down when you're going down a hill, but uh, looks pretty good otherwise. But these covers are plastic, and they all seem to leak. This bike's a 2011. I had a 2010, and I had the front diff rebuilt twice, and it still leaked. So... 
these covers are supposed to be a lot better and it eliminates that ADC but I've never used it and neither is my dad so should be alright so we'll get that uh, pinion shaft switch over and get her back on the bike so when you pull this pinion out of here you have to reuse the big bearing at the back as well as the o-ring that's back there too doesn't look too bad I'll probably clean that up a little bit before I try and slide it in that new one and this is the o-ring that you need to reuse That looks all right, so get that swapped over. There. Now this has a square O-ring, so I will make sure it's in there flat So before you put them on, they give you a pretty good idea of where the bolts go. There's three long ones and one short one. So I have to make sure they get into the right place. And before I put them on, I'm gonna put a bit of anti-seize on them. Those are the bolts that were in it. And the back of the housing where it's threaded, like where those holes are, they're open to the back. So water and moisture and stuff can get in there. And the casting's aluminum and when Metal and aluminum are together, they corrode. So it's always a good idea to put some anti-seize on stuff, especially on four wheelers. And I'll put it on the axle splines <clears throat> when I put them back together too. So here we go, let's get this thing in. So I was just looking at these old bolts and the two from this side are the rusty looking ones because the threads are open on the back of those, but those two shinier ones are from the far side and the threads aren't exposed on the back they just uh, go into the housing and they're not open on the back that's uh just a funny look at uh what water and stuff does to them so should we get in the anti-seize something else you gotta look for before you put that uh, new pinion on is there's these two little o-rings and they came out of there and there and uh you just got to make sure you clean them up and put them back on before you put the new cover on. And when you go to slide this in, this little tab here and this smaller one on that side have to face the left and right side and they cover up those little O-rings. So just uh, make sure you slide it in the right way. A little bit of uh, any seeds on there. So like the instructions say this is the short bolt and it goes in the bottom right. Oh, well, good day to be working inside. April 15th and it's snowing like crazy.
Not bad in here though. So I finally got everything put back together. I had to put these two brackets back on both sides. I had some of the bolts taken out of that power steering motor, but I didn't end up needing to take it out. I got those tie rods back on. Got the new billet pinion cover on there. That's looking good. Uh, yeah, so she's all in there. Got everything all put together. Spindles back on, axles in. And while everything was out, I greased all the front A-arm bushings. Um, it's an excellent time to do it when there's no tires and everything's all tore apart because these things are not very handy to work on. I'm trying to get a grease gun in there, pretty well possible. So got that greased and now I'm going to get the fill plug out and fill her up with oil. So this plug is an eight millimeter Allen. And you get yourself a fancy little funnel like so, stick her in there, and fill it up with this uh, demand drive fluid. Every, the diff, the transmission, and the rear end all take different oil, so that's why I have this labeled front, so I can remember. It doesn't hold a lot of oil, I think like eight ounces or something, but uh, it'll be running everywhere here in a minute. There we go. Okay, so the instructions say that if you put it in the four wheel drive ADC mode with the wires just cut off, it'll give you an engine light. So to correct that, they give you this little resistor and they tell you to splice it. Uh, to solder it in those two wires and put the uh, wire loom back over it. So let's give that a go. So this is quarter watt, 12 ohm resistor. And it says to cut one wire shorter than the other and then just loop it around and then kind of put it in there like that. Don't forget to put your shrink tube on before you solder them on. All right, so got her all. Finished up there, that's what it looks like. Looks pretty good. Got her all filled up with oil. And those wires I had to solder, I had to get a bigger chunk of wire loom 
to fit that resistor and the shrink tubing in there. But uh, just got her all tied up nice out of the way. That's looking good. That's ready to ready to ride. Dad'll be happy.